Thank you. 
and she was also a woman of great faith. Hannah's longing for a child and her dark season of waiting has helped many people around the world to grow when they read of her story in the Bible. Hannah's faith has ignited the faith of many people around the world. I wrote a few points here about Hannah. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. You have 
So God knew that Hannah was designed to bring forth something in the earth that would change the course of history. And he had to prepare Hannah mentally and emotionally to bring forth this great prophet in the earth. The preparation was not an easy one. Because, beloved, preparation proceeds promotion. Amen. I want you to write that down. Preparation always proceeds promotion. So Hannah was chosen by God to go through one of the most hurtful seasons of preparation of her life. And that season was very necessary for the promotion to come. Now probably at the time, at the time when she was being humiliated by the Problems in life and all the hurt that 
feeling. She never gave up on God. That's the beautiful thing about Hannah and Hannah's prayer for life. She never gave up on God. And so tonight the Lord does not want you to give up either. So Hannah was selected for this great
suffering. Sometimes you have to embrace the suffering. Just as Yeshua embraced the cross. He embraced Trust the Lord. You cannot afford to put 
your trust in anything else but the Lord. Because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. He knows exactly what he's doing. Apostle Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy compared to the glory that's about to be revealed in us. So I want you to get ready for that. We are on the final stretch to the coming of the Lord. This is the final stretch. We are in the last few years and the Lord is preparing his chosen end time vessels of revival. They're about to come forth. They're about to rise up to bring forth the word of the Lord. To preach the kingdom of God has come to the earth. Witnesses are arising up. End time preachers are rising up. End time prophets are coming forth. Messengers of fire are being built out of the spirit. But it's coming through suffering. And God wants you to wait. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because the Lord is about to use you in this last day. Your suffering was necessary because your suffering prepares you for the, for the promotion in the spirit. When you suffer to, for righteousness sake, when you are promoted in the spirit, you, your spirit man is prepared. She remembered 
her divinity in God. She knew that the Spirit of the Lord was inside of her and He was the greatest one. The Spirit of God in her helped her to remember His promises that He would come true for her. So our light affliction, which is but for a moment, will kick for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hannah was a woman of great prayer. She trusted God. Hannah's prayer did not stop because it looked hopeless. Even more now, she continued to pray. And it's the same for you and me. We must never stop praying because it looks hopeless. Continue to pray. Continue to trust the Lord for whatever you may be believing for the Lord for. Whatever that miracle may be. You've got to continue believing the Lord. Remember, everything that you are going through, it is because the Lord is working it out for His sake, so that His glory can be revealed in your life. Sometimes our cases are difficult and we cannot understand it and we cannot, we cannot discern why the Lord would allow us to have to go through certain kinds of suffering. But every single human being on the earth that has been saved and sanctified, we all have been given a portion of suffering to go through. Widows, I wrote something here for you. Widows are chosen by God. Women whose husbands have died and passed on. You have been assigned this portion so that God can get the glory out of your life. Oh, hallelujah. To every widow under the sound of my voice, I want you to know that the Lord is looking on at you and the Lord says, I will get the glory out of your life. As you continue to praise me, as you continue to worship me, Lord, 
Nevertheless, it's not my will, but your will be done. The minute that you say that, angels will come to strengthen you. Angels will come to your assignment. The minute that Yeshua said, never my, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Angels came to his assignment. Angels were released to strengthen him. I decree over your life, angels are on assignment to strengthen you. Angels will come to strengthen you. Angels will help you to drink your cup of affliction, to go through that season. Angels will come to help us to make it to the other side of suffering. in their body. 
bodies and their health. Things that have been lodged in their bodies and it's difficult for doctors to get at it, to cut it away. Deformities, if you have a deformity in your body, if your foot is de somewhat deformed or you have to walk with a limb, if your hand is deformed or you are missing fingers or you are missing a hand, you are missing a part of your body, the Lord says, you have been assigned this portion of suffering for a period so that I can get the glory out of your life. Go through your period of suffering. Praise me while you are going through and I will show you what your assignment is. The Lord wants you to be encouraged tonight. The Lord wants us to serve Him in gladness. The Lord wants us to travail in prayer. And the Lord wants us to continue so that we can make it to the end. So that He can get the glory. Everything that the Lord does is so that He can get the glory out of our lives. Imagine the blind man was blind. Born blind. He was born blind. He was born blind. And he's been walking around blind. And he's just looking and, and tapping and looking for a place to walk. He has to use his stick and he's blind. And it seems as though it was a life of suffering. And people are thinking, well, he has sinned or his fathers have sinned, his mothers have sinned. And Jesus said to his disciples, this man has not sinned, neither his parents, but this was done so that my father can get the glory out of his life. Yeah. Healing was available. After his portion of suffering, do you know what happened to the blind man? Jesus restored his sight. And God received all the glory from his years of being blind. I decree over your life the Lord is about to receive all the glory from your years of suffering, from your years of hurting, from your years of crying, from your years of feeling shame, feeling hurt, feeling abused. You may have been cast out. You may have been pushed down. You may have been beaten up by life. The, pre the pressures of life may have beat you to the ground. But the Lord says, I am going to get the glory out of your life because I'm about to turn your test into a testimony. I am specialty. I have what it takes to turn your mess into a message. Receive the anointing tonight to go through until you come over to the other side. I'm going to get to the other side. No matter what the enemy is showing me, I'm going to get to the other side. I'm going to make it to the other side. I'm going to push my way over until I come over on the other side of glory. Glory was waiting. Just a little longer, just a little way to go again. You're going to make it. Let's go. 
Satan. There's glory on the other side of your pain and shame and suffering. I know what I'm telling you. There's glory on the other side. There's always glory on the other side. Jesus, Yeshua, He is a master at turning our mess into a message. Oh, hallelujah. I've got one more point for you concerning Hannah's prayer. And this is the point that I want to share with you. Thank you. 
11. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaiden, if you will remember me and not forget thy handmaiden, but if you will give me a man child, give me a son, then I will give him back unto the Lord all the days of his life. And therefore no razor shall come upon his head. before she ever received the miracle back to the Lord. And that's what you call a sacrificial form. Hannah committed a miracle back to God. Tonight the Lord is saying, commit all that you do back to God. Just give it back to Him. Commit to Him all your doings, all of your ways, all of all of your, your time, your resources, your talents, your gifts, your treasures, your homes, your homes, your children, your houses of prayer, every single thing committed to the Lord in prayer. I wrote a point here for you as I'm bringing us into a close now. I'm bringing us into a close. Thank you. 
Miracles will locate your loved ones. Family restoration, healing and deliverance. Family breakthrough, salvation for loved ones. Salvation for sons and daughters. Miracles have come tonight and your miracle will locate you. The miracle worker is working on your behalf. Tonight the Lord says, answers have come to your prayer. Receive your answers tonight. In the mighty name of our Lord, Yeshua, the Messiah. Now I've got a special song that we're going to pray to seal off tonight's uh, night of worship and adoration unto the Lord. And it's a, it's a beautiful song. You are great. You do miracles so great. I want us all to sing and worship the Lord with this song as we get ready to close out. Because that is exactly what is happening in your life. Between now and the next seven days, a great miracle will be worked out in your life. The Lord will get glory out of your pain and your suffering. And that's the word of the Lord. Let's sing this beautiful song out tonight. You are great. You do miracles so great. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for coming to church tonight, everyone. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Let's worship our way out of the prayer room tonight with this beautiful song. You deserve
Have a blessed night. Mm -hmm.